Hello, wildlings. I'm your creep smith, and you found my fear forge. <laughs> Lucky you. Aha! More rituals. Welcome back, wildlings. Now, all the times that you hear people speak of or describe these rituals, these methods of contacting whatever it is you wish to entreat with, most often it'll be in terms of risk and reward, the dangers of contact and the boons thereby gained. You almost never hear about what it does to the person enacting the ritual. Not just the aforementioned danger, but how it may change them in lasting ways. Mind, body, soul. Well, you're not here for cautionary BS, right? You just want to hear a story. Excuse me while I dust off my awful accent. <clears throat> Tonight's tale, a simple ritual with an author that wishes to remain a mystery. Before I begin to relay the details of this ritual, I should probably explain that you need to be in a certain state of mind for it to work. I'm sure a lot of you out there will know what I mean, even though I'm not the best person to be explaining human emotions. It's a kind of churning, constant emptiness. I feel in that Although you've no desire to die, life simply takes too long and you'd rather another option. It's very important that you feel this way when undertaking the ritual, because another option is exactly what will give you. The details are as follows. I've tried to make it as simple as possible and to cut down on the cryptic rubbish that my contemporaries often include in these things, but you need to appreciate how hard that is. We don't live by constants as you do. We live by symbolism and meaning. Bread doesn't sustain us, but the idea of bread, ah, uh, that makes a very good meal indeed. Still, enough talk, even if you did want to hear about me. I wouldn't be able to explain it. Apologies for this as well, but if you're not a resident of the United Kingdom, you have a little traveling to do. The new world doesn't interest us as much as the old ones, and this isn't going to be as convenient as finding any old hospital or halfway house. You will travel to Suffolk, England and find a public house called the Queen's Head on the crossroads of four villages, Southwold, Alderberg, Dunwich, and Walberswick. They've all been well noted by history, though not necessarily in the history books. Anyhow, once there, visit the place during the hours of 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. and take a good look around the pub itself, without going inside. The crossroads is a simple one. Four towns lie in four different directions, though new roads may not reflect that accurately. Take a compass with you. Take ten steps toward each town, then ten steps back to your original location. Once you've done this for all four, proclaim, I have seen this crossroads too many times. Once said, step into the pub. It should look much as it did in my time, which may well be a shock to you. Don't worry, you can turn around and leave right at that moment if you so wish. Go back to your life, read these stories from the safety of a computer screen. If you do decide, however, to continue this course of action, then go to the bar and ask for a glass of the house malefic. The barman will give you a glass of red wine and accept no payment. Now drink it and you are exactly halfway to where you want to be. Good. Once it's done, he will tell you that you've had enough and ask you to leave. Do as he says, for though he's a good friend of mine, he's a spiteful man with an old crow for a wife and he delights in an excuse for a fight, which he's fairly good at. When you leave, you will find a large black horse right outside. Mount it, it's yours. A little gift from me to you in gratitude for the tasks that you've performed so far. The wine will have warmed you a little, I hope, for you have a long ride ahead of you. It doesn't matter in which direction you travel. It never really did. 
The roads will be old now, impossibly so perhaps, and a dense fog will cover the tracks. Plow ahead, don't deviate from the road. He may send a guard to veer from the mists and try to stop you, but keep moving. He may even send a loved one to plead that you slow down. This is a trick. It's me that he wants to stop. See, we've never quite seen eye to eye. The mists will pass, and you'll see an end to the road ahead. A gorge of impossible depth. Now don't stare into it. Contrary to popular belief or what you may have heard, it doesn't gaze back, but it may hold you from your task, and neither of us wants that, do we? To continue, you need only do one thing. Ride the horse from the cliffside and plummet into the gorge. I never said this would be easy, did I? Don't worry, it's an exhilarating rush. For the most part, I shan't talk of the next few minutes of your trial. That would be improper. If you survive, congratulations. Many don't make it this far. They suddenly decide that they have too much to live for. <laughs> what a joke. As though cowardice and misery were badges of honor. However, those that do have the courage for this, and I commend you, I truly do, will have but one final task ahead of them, the hardest of all. He will appear to you. Now, I've seen him before more times than I'd care to mention, and I know this next part will be no easy task. You must deny him. He'll show you your loved ones, those who have passed from life, and he'll promise you a life with them. You must deny him. He will offer you bliss, release from pain. You must deny him. Finally, he'll offer his own friendship and his regard. Deny him. His words are false and you'll find no succor with him. Finally, he will leave. Good. And we'll be alone. Now for your gift. The reward for your efforts. No problem to a being like me. I'll touch you upon the forehead once. And you will awake in the bed that you find most comfortable. From this point on, you will be possessed of an irresistible charisma and charm. Disease will never trouble you, no wound will harm you, and no argument will sway you. You'll be one of my children, and you will recognize others that I've dealt with by the black fingerprint that they too have on their forehead. The only catch? Well, there isn't one. I'm not like him. I don't deal in punishments. I reward my children. Well, that doesn't sound so bad. Depending on who you trust. Remember, kids, things ain't always as you've been told, no matter who it is that's telling you. So stay scary. Remember that reports and knowledge ain't the same thing. But that it never comes free. And make the most of your nights. <laughs>